Okay, we are recording. So welcome everybody. Uh, we are going to talk about links on our website today. So how do we create links? How do we use links? How are links important to our websites? Um, and what are the different things that we can link to and how do we check them? So um, what I'm doing today is I'm using an example page off of the WVLS website. Um, the page is the digital library with information about uh, our Libby app. And uh, this is going to be just using, it's showing you how different modules um, re interact with links in different ways and what types of different things that you would want to be linking to when you do this. I'm gonna take one quick second to bring up my um, list here. And I think we've got everybody who was waiting in the chat or, or waiting in the waiting room signed in. So uh, let's see. So we'll get started today. Um, links are the tool we use to um, bring people to different resources and different places on the on the internet. So we can do, we can link to different things. We can link to other web pages. So if you click on something, it'll take you to another place on the internet whether it be a place on your website or a place out on the internet. But then we can also use links to link to documents. And that might be something if you wanted um, like meeting agendas or minutes where people can either view them on your computer or they can download them. Uh, and there may be other cases where you're linking to images or videos or linking out to YouTube. Again, a link to YouTube is similar to just linking to another web place on the website, but there are a few different Divi modules that work differently and might be able to showcase your work um, better for that type of thing. Today, we're gonna st stick to general links. If you participated in the um, Divi Builder 101 session, you, had, um, you got a really good overview of how the Divi Builder um, is broken down into sections, rows, and modules. And if you didn't have a chance to do that, do check out our resources page. Um, and because if you, that's going to be a really good fundamental, um, a fundamental piece for understanding where or how uh, the Divi Builder, how the Divi Builder is organized and how links um, from different types of modules will function. So, site services. So I put the um, link to our training, uh, our training thing um, page in the chat, and it's right here. Oops. Website service. What do you bet? Yep, it's website service, not services. And so a reminder that down here on the how-to resources and the tutorials, down in our Webmaster Tutorial YouTube playlist, there is a recording of that Divi Builder 101. And there's also here this Divi Module Basics, the image module. I'll be start, starting to add different um, module basics. So it'll all be under Divi Module Basics and then each one of the types of modules that we use uh, we'll start appearing here in written documentation. For the most part, we don't, um, we do use certain ones. We use images and blogs and sliders more than we use some of the other ones and buttons. Uh, so each one of those modules will start to appear here over time. And that you'll see a little bit more of how that matters today. So for our links training, we have different things that create links. In this example, we have right here at our digital library training page, we have a button that is a link, we have an image that is a link, and we have text that is a link. And we generally know what a link is when we're using a website because you hover over it and your pointer cursor turns into a hand cursor telling you, and sometimes like some of these um, have a little bit of animation. So when you hover over it, it'll move just slightly and tell you that it might be an interactive um, piece. That's actually a whole other lecture on how you do that on your website. Um, 
and making that animation happen, that'll be part of module trainings in the future. And then we have this, um, these text links down here. And down here, we have another image mod or another, sorry, Divi module that has a, um, a drop down uh, accordion module, it's called. And here again is a whole variety of links all included. And you know this because it's the blue and uh, the pointer is changing. The good news is you don't have to sit there and code for it to um, change color and become a link as much as you might've had to do in the past, that's all integrated. But how do we get and attach a link to an image, a button or a text link? So we'll take a look at this um, because, I'm gonna do this real quick. Because we had talked about the Divi Builder 101, I want to compare what we're looking at on the front end. So this is the visual side of the website. This is what the public sees the front end builder, and then our back end builder. This is the back side of your website. And again, we have our Divi builder in the large purple box that contains the blue sections, the green rows, and then the black modules. Each one of these is a module. So, and, and in this case, ooh, this is, this, is, this is getting really interesting. We have an orange section. Um, the only difference between an orange section and a blue section is that the orange section gives us a few different options for how that layout is going to work. We will talk about that in, different, in a different setting, but just if you do happen to see a web page on the backside that has orange, it is the same function as the blue section. Don't let it freak you out. But here we see that in this orange section box, we have image, button, and thank you to our Advantage donors. And then we have a separate row in here with Meet Libby and Meet Libby Info. If I come back and I look at what this looks like, we have our image here, we have a button, and we have thank you to our Advantage donors. And then we have our Libby and our Libby information. So just so you see how that works front end and back end, because today we'll talk a little bit about adding links from both sides. Let's start with our uh, visual builder on the front end, since most of us will probably work from there. We enable our, uh, our visual builder as usual. And while that loads. So again, we have, now we see that there, this is outlined in orange because it's that specialty orange section here. And then we have our image, we have our button, we have our text be beneath here, we have our image here, and we have a text here. Um, and as the black pops up, that tells you it's a module. This, mo this image doesn't have a link associated with it, but this image does. And so let's look at our, um, our Try Libby app, or our Try Libby app, one tap reading app. Oh, say that five times fast. Um, we, so let's say you have a website, you've already added your image here, but you wanted to see the link or add a link. So this is, again, under our um, Divi Builder, this is an image module. And in almost every module that Divi makes, you can add a link. So actually, I'm going to do a really quick comparison here. This one is a, is a module. It is also an image module. It has an image here, but it has no link. Once you scroll down, you have your image, you see the link. There is this part here is blank. So we have a drop down in each one of this inside of our um, image module. This one, there is no link here. If I come over to the Try Libby and I click on the link, here we have a link to the WPLC OverDrive content. And this is the other piece that you would be interested in this is that this has the option of whether you want to have your website open in the same window or in a new tab. Um, one of the things to be aware of is if you are linking to another website, you want to think about what happens to your user when they are doing this. If it's some another page on your website, you may not be as important for it to open in a new tab. 
it can be in the same window, they're still on your website. If, as in this case, we are clicking on something and it is sending us out to a new place, you may want to open that in a new tab on the browser so that people can still get back to your website. And in fact, one funny thing is I was testing this out and I don't remember if it was this one or one of the other ones, the back button wouldn't work. It got stuck in an HTML loop and there was like a something with the loading of the other website. It you couldn't back button your way back into our website. So if you wanted to go back and read the rest of the information, you actually had to do the, um, you had to like, oops, you had to right click on this and find your, your, um, so, oh, your web browsing history in order to reopen the WBLS page. So something to be um, aware of in any of this time that you are linking out to an outside source is selecting, I highly advise selecting in new tab. Very similarly, um, the button, I'm going to come over here to the button module. So this one is a Divi module for buttons. And again, we'll go over modules and options for those in a different setting. But here you see the button is live and there's a donate. And if you click on the link, here's a Google form that has um, another, it opens into a new tab. And so that button will take you out to another website opening in a new tab that has that link. So that's how you would um, create a link for a button. Slightly different is this text module. So here we have a text module. The whole module itself does not have a link because within the text itself, we have textual links. So the text that is contained within this module links to different things based on what the information that they, that is being presented in text. How you would see what this is, um, you click on it until it highlights and up in the text, there is insert edit link. So in the toolbar at the top above the text, when you click on it, it will open up what the link is that currently exists. It will show you the text you want to display and it will create, it will, you will add the URL. And again, you would set that target to new window because this is taking us to another point on our, on our website. Again, click on, as you click on things, you would see it um, highlighted in blue. That indicates a link, click on the insert link and you'll see that the link is um, highlighted. And it, again, the target is in a new window. These are all links to external websites um, or different options for um, taking people to other web-based places. Are there any questions on that aspect of, of links? And we'll go through adding a few links in a minute. I just want to show you where they exist on this page. Well, now I'm going to scroll down to the more interesting um, accordion module. When I click on the little plus or minus here, this module pops down with a whole list of different um, reports in this case. It could be any kind of content, um, textual content. If I click on this, we're going to see this is a toggle, uh, in, uh, uh, a, sorry, a toggle module. And in this case, the toggle module is full of purchase reports for um, our WPLC purchases going back into, into 2021. Obviously, it hasn't been updated for a while. Um, don't know if we're going to continue using this, but it's here for a good example. When I click on this link, this one takes us to an uploads file. This is an example of how we would add content via documents on our website. These Every one of these is going to open up um, a, I think in this case, they're actually Excel files. Let me scroll to, yep, these are Excel files. So on these, you can create a download from your media, um, from your media library. Most often we will probably be using PDFs. In a few cases, you might be downloading full Excel files or full um, uh, Word documents that people can edit. 
but most often we're going to be putting PDFs on our website. Again, the text that is displaying is here. And um, sorry, I've got something yelling at me over here. Uh, sorry. Okay, shutting that down. Okay. And then in this case, because it's downloading a document, we're not using another target. Um, it will just take it to a download. Or if um, it's a PDF, it may open it up in the same browser window. You can play around with that. People may have their browsers set for their PDF readers. Some people have Adobe Acrobat or another um, PDF reader that will download it as a separate item. How do you get something added to your, your list from your documents? So if I have wanted to add a, another purchase report, let's say, I will go to, let's say I have an Excel file. In, in this case, I'm just going to create a brand new Excel file. Okay. Give me a thumbs up if you can see my Excel on the screen. Hopefully it up to that. Awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to create a blank Excel file. So this is our purchase report for 2022, let's say. And file, save as. And I'm just going to save it in this case. I'm just going to throw it in downloads just because I don't need it anywhere too fancy. But I'm going to call this um, WPLC. Let's see. Keeping in. Let's see. Oh, June 2022. Oops. So I've created my Excel file. I'm going to save it to a place that I know where it is. I'm going to close that out. There's a couple different routes I can take to do this. Um, if you've been playing along with me at home, uh, you know that Divi and WordPress give you a couple different ways to skin a cat. You can add your media right here from within the toggle settings, or you can actually back out to your dashboard and go to your media library and add a new item from within your media library. So you, you can approach this from a couple different directions. If you had a bunch of things to upload, you might want to dump them all into your media library first and then grab them as you need them. If you only have one or two things, sometimes it's easier to do it right from within the um, within your text box or within your um, toggle or whatever your module might be. So I open add new file. I click upload files and I can select my file or I can drag and drop. I'm going to do that June 2022 purchase report. Click on open. There I see that I have my purchase report, XLSX there. And just double checking that if I needed to add a caption or a description or anything there, and I click select. And just like that, it has added it to my, um, to my list. And because I named it exactly the same as the rest of it, I don't need to go back and change what that says. I can edit this by going into that insert link and you see that that is there. Let's say I go, oh, it actually wasn't the June purchase report. That was the file name, but I actually want this to be the spring purchase report, even though we're publishing it in June. I can change the text, even though the um, name on the file is different, I can change what the text says. The other um, time you might want to do something like that is like if you wanted to give somebody something to download, but you want to say, click here to download our summer reading brochure and then you add your media i'm going to upload a file let's see i think i've got a couple of summer reading brochures hanging around out here somewhere yeah here's some srp activities we'll just grab a pdf for that so i've got that i'm going to add that as my thing it's going to rename it don't do that i don't want it i want you to say click here now well, easy enough done here to download our summer reading brochure. So now the text says, if I click on that link to edit it, it's still going to go to that 
SRP activities 2023.pdf, but the text that displays to the link is click here to download our summer reading brochure. So you can leave it as the name of the document. It's going to automatically insert that as your link, um, text link, but you can change it to something that is more prompting for your user. And again, you're always thinking about how is this user going to use this website? Are they going to look at this and understand that they're supposed to click here to download? Think of what the final result you want. You want somebody to go onto your website, see library board meeting agenda, click on that um, toggle to open up that entire accordion menu and boom, there it is. And if you want to do download agenda or um, click here for the June, you could write out those full instructions. You might want to put that as a general text in there, but put yourself into the user's shoes and know that they need to be able to look at the instructions in front of them and know where to click and how to find it. Okay. That was a lot of talking right there. Any questions on adding documents and renaming your links. Of course, you always want to save. And right there you see, it's like click here to download our summer reading brochure, our spring 2022 purchase report. I have to save my entire page. Exit the visual builder. And now I scroll down here. There's my information right there. If I click here to download our summer reading brochure, it's going to bring it up as a download over here. If I click on the spring 2022 purchase report, in this case, it's actually going to open it up for, um, uh, for the person right in because it's um, opening it in Edge. And that's Edge has the permission on my computer to open an Excel document to view it right there. And then I could also download the file. Any question? Okay, I have one other, oh, how do we actually, so I'm gonna create a new um, image module. So for this, I'm actually going to go back to our backside Divi Builder because sometimes I work better when I can just see where everything is. And in this case, underneath Meet, uh, Meet Libby and Meet Libby Info, I want to add another fun module. And so I'm going to click on this black plus, and this brings up our entire module options. So again, we will go through over time and um, come up with when we want to add each one of these different types of modules. Um, actually, we have a couple minutes. I am going to, let's do video just for the fun of this. So if we click on video, speaking of adding links and adding links in a special way, we can actually um, put a YouTube URL onto our website and have that right there so that it's embedded right in our website. So this one, if you click on it, it's going to bring us to our media library. We generally do not want to use this. Um, this means that you have put a, a video onto your website and it's going to take up a lot of space is going to slow your computer down and slow everybody's computer down because it's going to generally slow the website down with too much content. So what we want to do is insert from URL. Well, let's see. Let's go to, let's go to our playlist. And this content doesn't make any sense for, well, maybe there's a digital byte. Let's see. Is there a digital byte on using Libby? Uh, da -da, da -da, I bet there is. There might be. I'm not going to take too much time to find the exact thing. Um, no, we'll just grab this. I'm going to copy a link. Uh, let's see. Do it this way. If I click on here, there, copy my link from my YouTube page, and then go back to, oops, go back to my insert from URL. There I can insert it. It's going to give us a little preview of ours and we can, of our um, 
YouTube video. And here it will insert here. Check that box. And let's take a look at what this looks like. So another way for us to link out to other pages, if I had a Libby training video, I could drop that right here and people could watch the embedded video right from the page. Another way, and again, I like this is, I added it from the backside of the page. You can come in here um, under enable visual builder and add a new module. I just sometimes really prefer, um, I prefer doing it from the backside where I can just see much more easily what this is. So if I wanted to do another image, I would click on that black, black plus and then click another image, add my image. And I'm just going to use this lovely quote that we have going on here. And if I wanted this to link out to something, maybe I want, let's pick our motivational quote of the day. No, oh, that's, give me some motivational quotes. Okay, there's a website full of motivation for you. Um, so there's my motivational quotes and I want this to open in a new tab. I just paste that into there. I already have my image added up above, link down here, opening it a new tab. And I'm gonna click check. And if I update my page, I'm gonna view page as soon as it finishes loading. Now I have my video. And I have an inspirational quote. And it's going to take us to this motivational quotes page. So that's how I would add a link to an image module. The button is very similar. If I come back to my back uh, backside, click on the black plus and find my button. My button text is like, click here for motivation. And I'm gonna put the same link into this button for the motivational page in the new tab. If I was really being organized, I would rename this as maybe instead of button, it would be my but, um, button of motiv motivation. Click save, update. And now I have my button of motivation right there. Hey, okay. I'm going to leave the training part of that now, unless any other questions. And I will break away from a recording and answer your questions because that's basically what I have for adding links.